Hey guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 video. Today's video is the first Hunter build for Season of the Wish, and it's an incredibly explosive playstyle I'm really excited to share with you. A few brief highlights of the build include constant Radiant Restoration effects, which are perfect for keeping you alive at all times and boosting your weapon damage. On top of this, we have infinitely chaining weighted throwing knives that not only increase in damage as we get more and more kills, but any precision kill that we get will instantly ignite enemies, and any scorched enemy hit with these throwing knives will also instantly ignite. Pairing our infinite waiting throwing knives with any of our solar weapons allows us to build up constant stacks built into our high explosive grenade, which can instantly ignite any target hit by it. Before we get into the video, be sure to like and subscribe for more Test 2 content like this. I'm working on a Warlock build, so stay tuned for that in the near future, and let me know down in the comments below what you thought of this build and any recommendations you have for future build guides. Starting off on your subclass, for your super, it's really up to you whichever one you would prefer. I mainly use Blade Barrage just for the shorter cooldown and the more fast paced explosive playstyle that comes with it that I feel better fits this build, but if you want to use Golden Gun and have additional benefits for your melee charge for example, you can absolutely do that instead. For your other abilities, I'm using Gambler's Dodge. The main reason is to instantly regenerate both of our weighted throwing knife charges whenever we use our dodge near enemies, and on top of this, this also plays into our exotic and helps keep up the timer for the damage buff duration of our weighted throwing knives. Speaking of which, for your melee charge, you're going with Weighted Throwing Knife. The primary reason for this is not only having a ramping damage bonus that's granted to us from our exotic chess piece, which I'll go over later, but it also allows us to instantly ignite any enemy by getting a precision kill on them, and any enemy that is scorched, simply hitting them with this Weighted Throwing Knife, not even killing them or landing a crit, will instantly ignite them and do a huge AoE explosion. This playstyle is effectively utilizing the weighted throwing knife, similar how you would utilize the explosive knife in a Caliban's hand build, but instead of having the lower damage that kind of struggles to keep up in endgame content with explosive knives, you have the weighted throwing knife, which can easily one-shot basically all red bars, even in something like a GM, and thanks to Radiant and all the other effects we have going on with this build, we have infinite amounts of throwing knives, and with our exotic, we also get a second stack that we can just constantly keep up with this build. The other nice thing for those who don't know is throwing knives actually still benefit from 1-2 punch, so if you want to with this build you can also pair this with a 1-2 punch shotgun and amplify the damage boost from your exotic and the 1-2 punch shotgun as well as the intrinsic debuff we have this build and have a weighted throwing knife do over 200,000 damage in a single hit and again we have infinite throwing knives that we can just instantly regen from multiple sources. For your grenade, it's really up to you. Whichever one best fits your playstyle is the one to go with. For me, I personally like using the healing grenade just to have an instant source of restoration, which we can then chain using our other fragments to keep up the infinite restoration and healing effects alongside our infinite radiant effects. For aspects, the first one is knock them down. In short, this allows your blade barrage to have more projectiles, or if you use a golden gun for example, deadshot golden gun has more damage resistance and marksman has increased duration. And while you're radiant, your final blows with your equipped throwing knife are fully refunded. This is the main key behind what allows us to throw infinite weighted throwing knives with this build, and it's absolutely mandatory for this playstyle. The next aspect is Gunpowder Gamble, and this allows you to build up to a high damage explosive grenade that just simply generates by getting kills with solar weapons or solar abilities, or defeating targets with solar debuffs like igniting or scorch effects. Thanks to all the different ways this build has of actually getting kills, whether it's through solar weapons or abilities and often just igniting enemies, this allows us to build very quickly to our Gunpowder Gamble Grenade, and in many cases, getting kills with our Gunpowder Gamble Grenade will instantly refund it and allow us to chain that effect over and over again. The area of effect on this grenade is absolutely massive, and in most cases will just simply ignite anything that isn't instantly killed by it. And for those wondering, if you do hit an unstoppable champion with this, no matter where they are, as long as they're caught in the radius, they will instantly stagger and ignite. Completing the build is our fragments, so let's go over those now. The first one is Ember of Mercy. Whenever you revive an ally, you and any nearby allies gain restoration. And in addition, picking up a fire sprite grants restoration. This is the primary source for restoration, especially if you're not going to go with a healing grenade like I am, and this is how you're going to have infinite restoration effects. And you're just simply going to pick up these fire sprites, which also give you grenade energy, and these will give you the initial burst of restoration that you then can continue with other fragments. The next is Ember of Searing, which defeating Scorch targets grants you a bit of melee energy, and it also creates a fire sprite for you. The main reason behind using this is to generate the fire sprite so we can proc Ember of Mercy and keep our infinite restoration going. The other effect is it also generates a little bit of melee energy anytime we defeat a Scorch target, and we're going to be defeating a ton of Scorch enemies with this build, so it's a nice way to regen our throwing knife charge in case we lose both of them, and in case we don't have our dodge back to instantly refresh both charges. I'm also pairing this with the Ember of Empyrean, and this in short will extend the effect of restoration and radiant applied to us just by simply getting solar weapon kills or solar ability kills. And on top of this, we're using Ember of Char, which any solar ignition that we do will also spread Scorch stacks to affected targets. Again, any Scorch enemies will then also generate us some melee energy. On top of this, it'll also build towards our Gunpowder Gamble, and it fits perfectly into this build because of how easily we can chain ignitions. Briefly going over the artifact mods that are relevant for this build, the first one is Kindling Trigger. Basically, when you're Radiant, solar weapons will automatically scorch any unscorched combatants, and this is a 
great way to start the whole ability chain of this build in case you need to. The next one is Flint Striker. Basically, any rapid solar weapon precision hit and rapid solar weapon final blow will grant you Radiant. The best way to do this is just by getting multi kills, but if you want to, simply landing a few crits on a mini boss, for example, is a great way to get you Radiant. This is actually how we're going to start off having Radiant with this build, and we're going to keep it chaining by getting weapon final blows and ability kills. But this is how we initially start it. So, this one is mandatory with this build. The next one is Torch, which isn't a necessity with this build, but it is something I would recommend using if you want to get the most out of this playstyle. While you're Radiant, any weapon damage that you deal to a target that's affected by a Strand or Stasis debuff is increased by 5%. The next mod is Heart of the Flame or Solo Operative. In short, if you're playing with a fire team, use Heart of the Flame, which will grant your nearby allies Radiant when you pop your super, and the more allies that are nearby when you pop your super, you'll deal more damage with said super. It's about up to 20%, I believe, if you have a 5-person fire team. And again, if you're playing solo, use Solo Operative which will just grant you a 15% damage bonus to every damage source. Another mod that I would recommend but isn't mandatory for this build is Wished Into Being. Basically, while your super is near fully charged, ability final blows will spawn Orbis of Power. Basically, this lets you bypass any kind of heavy-handed or firepower cooldown timers and just lets you generate a ton of Orbis of Power by getting ability kills, which you'll be getting a ton of with this build. And the final mod I would recommend is Race of Precision. In short, getting a precision final blow will cause a target to ignite. Now, the one thing a lot of people miss with this mod is that it also works for abilities, not just weapons. Now, the main thing is that Titans and Warlocks really don't have a great way to take advantage of this, but Hunters have a fantastic kit that takes advantage of this in multiple ways. The first is if you use Golden Gun for your super, any precision kill that you get with it will cause a target to instantly ignite. And more relevant to us, any throwing knife kill that we get that ends in a precision final blow will also ignite a target. This gets even better when you consider we're using the weighted throwing knife, which deals a ton of damage and can one-shot red bars even in GM content. And while we're radiant, these weighted throwing knives are also infinite as long as we keep getting kills. If we were run out, we have multiple ways to get them back, one of which is through our dodge, which instantly refunds us two weighted throwing knives. As we get kills with these knives, not only is their damage progressively increasing, but any precision final blow with them is going to ignite the target and deal a ton of AoE damage. And again, just to remind you, this also works with our solar weapons. Getting into the armor and the mods then for today, for a helmet, I'm using Hands Dawn and Ashes Assets, just to increase the super energy that we get from our melee kills and from our grenade kills. And on top of this, I'm pairing a Harmonic Siphon, just so any solar weapon that we get a kill with will generate us an orb of power periodically. For your gauntlets, I'm also using Heavy Handed and Firepower, again just playing off of Hands On and Ashes Assets, which allows our melee and our grenade kills to periodically generate us an orb of power. The last mod for our gauntlets is going to be Focusing Strike, and this is a great way to build in synergy for this playstyle. It grants us class ability energy as we get Throwing Knife kills, which again, with our Throwing Knives being infinite in duration, as long as we have our Dodge and Radiant active, this allows us to get our Dodge Charge back pretty quickly in case we ever need to expend it to get back our melee charges. Next up on our Dura Chest Piece and our exotic for today is Aphidia Spaith. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, but I'm probably not. In short, this was an exotic that was already pretty interesting for the Hunter kit before this season, and at the start of the season, it got a massive rework that I think made it a must-have for basically any Solar Hunter out there. We have a multitude of ways to build up our Throwing Knife charges instantaneously. On top of all of that, upon getting a Throwing Knife kill, it grants you a progressively stacking damage bonus up to 3 stacks, and it goes from 30 to 60 to 100% damage increase, which is just simply doubling the damage of your Throwing Knife. And when you use your class ability during the duration of those buff stacks, it actually refreshes the timer on it, so it can help keep the longevity of that high damage melee potential going for a lot longer. Again, the nice thing about using this exotic for this season is as we're using our weighted throwing knife, which is already very high damage on its own, and get these precision kills, it also procs rates of precision, which allows us to get these high damage AoE explosions from our igniting effects. In short, utilizing this exotic for this build allows us to have two weighted throwing knife charges, and again, these weighted throwing knives have a progressively stacking damage bonus attached to them, which we can refresh the uptime with our dodge ability. And as we use these throwing knives, we can take advantage of seasonal mods like Race of Precision to cause huge AoE damage explosions with them. For the mods on our chest piece though, it's really up to you. I'm personally going with three damage resist mods just to help out with the survivability of this build. If you want to use something like reserve mods or charged up, it's entirely up to you, whichever best fits your playstyle. Onto our boots, the first mod is recuperation, which just allows us to gain a little bit of health back every time we pick up an orb of power. Again, pairing this with the damage resist to mainly support our survivability, which is often the weakest part of Solar Hunter. For the last two mods, I also have two stacks of Solar Weapon Surge, which grant our solar weapons a 16% damage bonus anytime we have a stack of armor charge available. And again, this can stack with things like From Whence You Came or Solo Operative, for example. For a cloak, the first one I'm using is Powerful Attraction, which just will simply pick up any orbs of power nearby when you use your class ability. I'm pairing this with Reaper for a bit of synergy, as it guarantees that after we dodge and collect any nearby orbs of power, our next weapon final blow will guaranteed generate an orb of power itself. To give this even a little bit more synergy, I'm pairing this with Bomber to help our grenade recharge come back a little bit quickly, since we already have a ton of ways to regen our melee charges. 
finally, let's get into the weapons for the build. The first one I want to recommend is Sunshot, which is in my opinion one of the best solar primaries this season period. In short, Sunshot is already a monster when it comes to ad clear, as getting a kill with Sunshot will automatically generate a chaining solar explosion, and when paired with something like Rays of Precision and Ember of Char, you can clear an entire room just off of getting one kill with this weapon. Plus, with it being an exotic hand cannon, also as a recipient of their most recent hand cannon buff, which allows this thing to shred majors because of the massive damage bonus that hand cannons got with that change. It's an absolute must for this season, and it's something I highly recommend basically with any solar build, and especially with this one. In case you don't want to use Sunshot, something like Vex Mythoclast is also a monster in PvE currently. It was already pretty decent to begin with, and at the start of the season, it got a 10% damage bonus in general to minor enemies, and its charge shot also got a 3 times damage multiplier attached to it, so this thing already shreds in PvE. Factoring in a 16% surge bonus, as well as Radiant and its own intrinsic damage bonus, and this thing is a monster for PvE content. If you don't want to use Sunshot or Vex Mythoclast though, pretty much any exotic solar primary work great right with this build. Stuff like Tarabuck comes to mind, weapons like Haruki of Needs, Tiku's Divination, Tommy's Matchbook, and Devil's Ruin also work very, very well. The final exotic I want to recommend is Dragon's Breath, which is an exotic power weapon. The main reason behind this is that Dragon's Breath already functions off of getting a ton of ignitions on its own, so pairing this with a high explosive playstyle, like the one I'm showing you today, is a perfect fit. Now that we've gone over the exotics, let's get into some legendary alternatives. The first is pretty much going to be any 1-2 punch shotgun, again we can pair the stacking bonus from Ophidius Faith with a 1-2 punch damage shotgun and allow our throwing knife to deal a ton of damage very very quickly if we wanted to. Again any weapon that has a strand or stasis debuff directly built into it, stuff like Slice for example, or in this case Chill Clip from Riptide, is also a good fit in case you want to max out your weapon damage. If you really like Sunshot but don't want to commit to the exotic slot, Something like Zalu's Bane is actually very similar to it with this season, especially with Race of Precision. I have mine with Firefly and Pugilist, but if you wanted to, you could even use something like Incandescent on this thing, and it's an absolute monster with all of the seasonal mods I went over earlier. Other solar weapons I would recommend include things like Aramite, things like Drang, Explosive Personality. Again, pretty much any solar weapon is fantastic this season, so feel free to slot in whichever one you favorite. For your power weapon, again, any solar weapon in general is fantastic this season, so feel free to use whichever you prefer. I like using this Apex Predator with Reconstruction and Bipod to allow us to get some nice multi-kills to help regen our Gunpowder Gamble Grenade very, very quickly. You can use something like Cataclysmic, you can use something like Unwavering Duty or Fixed Odds, which are both solar LMGs. It's really up to you, whichever you would prefer. All in all, guys, that's the build for today. Like I mentioned earlier, this is one of the most explosive playstyles I've come up with recently, and I've been having a ton of fun with it in PvE content. In summary, this is a Caliban's Hand type build, but one made for in-game content where Caliban's Hand can typically fall off and not be as effective. Again, to recap, we have constant Radiant and Restoration effects, a ton of igniting and scorching effects that we can chain back to back to back, all while enhancing our solder weapons, our throwing knife damage, and building up to our Gunpowder Gamble Grenade for high AoE damage, and all of this contributes to our super, which we can just unleash and deal a ton of igniting effects. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought of this build, as well as any recommendations for future build guides. Again, I am currently working on a Warlock build, so stay tuned for that. And if you liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe for more content just like this. Thank you guys so much for watching, I greatly appreciate your support on these videos, and as always, have a great day.